Hi there. Welcome to this level two podcast focusing on basic costing. My name's Gareth. You've got my email address there. You're more than welcome if you've got any queries to get in touch with me. Gareth John at fi.co.uk. I'm a managing director with First Intuition, one of the UK's leading accountancy colleges. In fact, We've done very well in recent years. We won UK Accountancy College of the Year in both 2010 and 2012. I was really, really delighted to be awarded UK Accountancy Lecturer of the Year in 2011. More recently, in 2013, we were nominated for Study Resource of the Year. And over the last few years, we've helped an awful lot of students to study for and to achieve competence in their assessments. Well, in this podcast, we're going to be focusing on basic costing. Particularly, we're going to be thinking about labour costs and how we can calculate labour costs, particularly if we've got overtime and if we've got performance-related bonuses available that can try and make the calculations reasonably involved in your assessment. Now, it's worth being aware there are various ways to pay members of staff. This is what would feature as the labour cost of a business. Labour costs are paying employees for their time, basically, whether it's on a weekly basis, a monthly basis, or even on an annual salary basis. Now, there are different ways to pay staff. It can be time-based, I, the more time they spend working, the more they'll get paid. So it could be done on the basis of the hours worked. And often what you might find is that staff might receive a basic wage for their basic number of hours, but they might also get overtime hours paid at a premium. So, for instance, if your basic wage was £10 per hour and your overtime premium was time and a quarter, that means that for the overtime hours you get an extra quarter on top of your basic wage. Now, if your basic wage is £10, a quarter of that would be £2.50, meaning that the total overtime rate would be £12.50 per hour the basic of 10 plus this premium of an extra £2.50, the extra quarter. So watch out for overtime being paid at a premium. We could also have piecework. Now piecework is a way of trying to incentivize staff to make more units. One of the problems with time-based systems is if you're paying somebody per hour, it doesn't really matter what they do with that hour, they're still going to earn the same amount. But with piecework, they're going to be paid for every piece they produce. So basically, paid for the number of units they actually make. That can be quite a good incentive for them to increase the level of what we call productivity in a business. The number of units they're making, because that way the member of staff will earn more. And we could also have various forms of performance-related bonuses. Again, these can be used to try and incentivize increases in productivity could be that if staff hit a certain target of production, they might earn a certain bonus. Could be, for instance, for salespeople, commission might be quite a common way of remunerating them. So the more they sell, the more they will earn. Well, let's have a look at a little example here, the sort of thing you might see in an assessment task. So, we've got the standard basic working hours at Crazy Girl Limited are eight hours a day for which staff are paid a basic hourly wage of £8 per hour. Any overtime worked is at time and a half, so they're going to get a premium on top of the £8 per hour. The expected level of production is 16 units per hour. If staff beat this target, they receive a bonus of £1.50 for each extra unit produced. So this is the basic information we're given about the way staff are paid at Crazy Girl Limited. They get basic pay for basic hours. They're going to get overtime pay for any overtime hours, and that overtime pay is going to be at a premium. And they also get bonuses if they achieve above a certain level of production. So possibly three elements to what they get paid. On Monday, Phoebe worked for nine and a half hours and produced 168 units. And our task here is to identify what is Phoebe's total gross wage for that day. Now, 
you might want to have a go at this. Now, bear in mind, you're going to have three elements to Phoebe's gross wage here. There's going to be basic pay for the basic hours worked. You then need to identify whether Phoebe worked any overtime above and beyond those basic hours and need to identify what their overtime rate will be. Remember, they're going to get a premium above their basic hourly wage. You then need to consider whether Phoebe produced enough units to deserve a bonus, and if so, how much that bonus would be. So why don't you pause me for a few minutes? Why don't you see if you can have a go at this example, see if you can work through the solution. And once you've come up with some numbers, you can restart me and we'll compare notes. Well, as we said, we need to combine three elements to Phoebe's wage here. We've got the basic wage earned, then any overtime pay and then any bonus earned. Well, starting with the basic wage, that's relatively straightforward here. The basic working hours are eight hours per day. You can see Phoebe's actually worked at least the eight hours of basic wage. And the basic hourly wage is eight pounds per hour. So eight hours at eight pound per hour is a basic wage of 64 pounds. Has Phoebe then worked any overtime? Well, Phoebe did work on Monday a total of nine and a half hours. Now, nine and a half hours, that is one and a half hours above the eight hours basic working hours. So I'm thinking one and a half hours of overtime work to give the total of nine and a half hours. Now, remember, overtime is paid at a premium. Now, overtime is paid at time and a half. So they take the normal basic wage of the eight pound add an extra half to that. Now, half of eight is another four pound. So I think that the overtime rate will be 12 pounds per hour. Basically, you can multiply the eight by one and a half to add on the extra a half. Now, one and a half hours at 12 pounds per hour, I get as an overtime pay of 18 pounds in total. And we then need to identify, does Phoebe deserve a bonus? Now, the bonus is based on the number of units produced. Now, remember, we've got the expected level of production of 16 units per hour. Now, 16 units per hour, and remember, Phoebe worked in total nine and a half hours. So we would have expected Phoebe to produce 152 units on Monday. Now, that's what we would have expected. Any more than that, and Phoebe's going to earn a bonus now, we're told that Phoebe produced 168 units. So we need to work out how many of those would qualify for a bonus. Well, 168 produced less than 152 we would have expected. I think that Phoebe's produced an extra 16 units above and beyond what would have been expected. And it's these extra units that get the bonus at £1.50 per unit. And 16 times £1.50, I think, is an extra £24 worth of bonus payable to Phoebe. So in total, the basic of £64 plus the overtime of £18 plus the bonus of £24, I think that Phoebe has earned a total gross wage for Monday of £106. Well, I hope you found that useful thinking about the different ways, in this case, that Phoebe can be paid, the different forms of remuneration. We've got an element of time based here, looking at the number of hours that Phoebe has worked, including a bit of overtime, and then we've got a performance-related bonus to worry about here. So I hope you found that useful, um, and maybe I'll see you next time.